Georgian Bay, and the ultimate proving grounds. How bad do you want it? When we say enough is enough, what are you willing to endure to succeed? For us, the answer is simple. Whatever it takes. Strap in and enjoy the ride on our hunt for the Giants of Georgian Bay. Most will never understand why we do it. Why we travel the distances, wake up before the sun, put up with terrible weather, and return at dark with nothing to show for it, only to do the same thing the next day. They'll never understand the degree of success from just seeing a single fish, the adrenaline that comes with setting the hook into one, how time stands still when a giant is in pursuit of your lure boat side, or the heartbreak of one getting away. Most will never understand why muskie are the fish of 10,000 casts, but it won't be us. Earlier this season, we encountered a handful of skis in an area we know hold fish in the upper 50 inch class, but were only able to get strikes from four of the 15 seen, and only two made it into the boat. After a summer full of weddings, tournaments, and other events, we are back to take another shot at catching one of these giants. Fall presents its own challenges. With cooling water temperatures and frequently switching winds, the forage will be on the move constantly, Big pike are moving into the shallows to compete with muskie and the weed lines, and the fish we want to target could be anywhere. Fishing quickly, using our electronics and the birds to help locate bait, covering water, and putting in the hours is the only way to ensure success on this trip. After an early start to the day and unloading our gear at camp, we start fishing right away. There is bait in the first area we choose to target, and so we are confident to fish on the trail. Yes? <laughs> Monster! <laughs> on the board. On the board. Well, hold that up for the camera. Two pounds? Three pounds? Yeah. Four well, if that's going after a dying dog, then I uh, feel like we can go really, really deep. <laughs> Oh, it's big, it's big. Thanks, Mike. Oh, it's big. Tell me where. He's coming up. Oh! Woo! <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Came back for it. Next job, huh? Quick. That's amazing. That's Two pike to start the trip with one measuring 40 and a half inches is never a bad thing. But this isn't the species we're after, so we decide to make some adjustments and check out a few more areas. With little else to show for the morning, other than eliminating some water, we would decide to hit one more area before heading back to camp to set up and have a late lunch. He followed like loosely like three or four times. Well, that a muskie. Yeah, I think it's so. A muskie. Yeah. muskie are the hardest species of freshwater fish to catch on the planet. 
No matter where they reside, they're at the top of the food chain and get to make their own rules. While Georgian Bay is home to the current world record muskie, it is one of, if not the hardest bodies of water to catch a muskie. With tons of water riddled with prime neighbor's point and feeding flats and habit, and a low population of muskie, there's just too much water and not enough fish to consistently come into contact with these species. Aside from locating a muskie, getting one to bite is a whole other mission. Known for their extreme pickiness, Georgian Bay Muskie will often follow once without striking before performing their infamous disappearing act and moving on from the spot entirely. As we get ready to head back out on the water for the evening bite, the wind has picked up considerably and prevents us from heading back to go after the muskie that followed in the eight earlier. After some searching, we find an area loaded with bait and have high hopes that the fish will be nearby. Day one was not as successful as we had hoped it would be, but after some good food, a few cold beers, and a night's rest, we were ready to hit the water again with everything we learned yesterday. The major and minors for today are within the late morning to afternoon, so we expect to find some active fish throughout the day. <laughs> Almost. Well, wasn't a giant anyway. No, it's a fish. That one hit pretty hard. While my partner takes a quick break on shore to stretch his legs, I decide to fish a nearby weed bed while waiting. Holy fuck! Adam, you missed it! Uh, definitely a 40 inch bite. It's fat as fuck! Those not the species we were after, the Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> pike is a happy accident. One this size is starting to push the limits on how big they get in these waters, and it's estimated to be around 25 years old. While I'm hooking the fish, I notice one of the gill filaments is broken. The hooks were in the corner of the mouth, so it's unknown if this happened during the, the hook set or throughout the fight. After trying to revive the fish for over half an hour, it's obvious it isn't going to make it. A sad outcome and one which we do our best to avoid at all costs, but one that's all part of the sport. After the high of catching the fish, the low in the boat felt extra deep when we realized it wasn't going to survive. Given the size of the fish, it's not one that we want to eat, and so I make the decision that it's going to be kept and be mounted. Continuing to fish the area, we slowly climb out of the low with a few more hard-hitting bites. 31, I saw. Two, 
power point. Oh no! Fuck. Oh, that was a big one. That had to be a musty. That was fucking huge. Fuck. See that? Yeah, it jumped right over fucking water. Oh. Wild that it jumped right out of the water, that big old tail off. You could see how big that thing was from far away from the boat. <laughs> yeah. That was a nice fish. Big fish, man. Ah. Right, we got more chances. He was After seeing this fish come clean out of the water, yeah, no, like it was, walking its tail was like, like either of us really yeah, know what to say. All we can do is sharpen the hooks and keep on fishing. I found that the muskie in this area love to jump out of the water. Earlier this year, one got off by jumping out of the water in a spot that has happened to me more than once before. Moving to an area known to have some big resident muskies, where the two were boated earlier this season, we run into a few other boats. In this area, pike are rarely caught due to how shallow and warm it is throughout the summer months. And so as the other boats slip off around the islands and shoals, we sneak into where most of the sightings have occurred in the past. I'm gonna have to head out yeah, a little earlier on Sunday to get this to a taxidermist. This one be. Yeah. Good? Yeah, huh? Oh, I'm getting a nap, yeah. While we didn't see this fish to know for sure, we are pretty confident that it was a muskie due to the history of the area. Not getting this fish in the boat is disappointing, but having two muskie hooked in a single day is much better than not seeing a fish, and it's not even noon yet. Trying to find some new areas with muskie led to a lot of driving, searching, marking weed lines, and catching some small pike. With nothing to show for the afternoon, we decided to make the run back to the area that produced the 43-inch pike, the jumping muskie, and the muskie that followed yesterday for the last few hours before dark at the end of the trip. We're on the board! On a fucking bean! Woo! Dude, I'm fucking so stoked.
The grind pays off. The grind yeah. pays off. I really didn't think I was getting another chance today. I've had so many chances. Only need one of them to count. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That was sweet. That was a fucking. That was awesome. Heading awesome. back to camp, it's hard not to think about the roller coaster of a day we had. The highs of putting big fish in the boat, and the lows of lo losing the fish we are here after. Getting bit from three different muskie in one day is not a common occurrence in these waters, and we are relieved that one finally made it into the boat. After a short fish in the morning with no success, it's time to pack up our gear and head home. While we weren't able to catch the 50 we've been chasing, we were able to put a bunch of big fish in the boat and had our chances at four different muskies over the two days, which is more than can be said for a number of other trips we've been on. The good news is the season is not over, and we will have a few more opportunities yet before the water is covered in ice. Fishing is fun, but we can all agree, catching is a whole lot better. Fishing is a puzzle, and our Zero to Hero Masterclass is here to help you solve regardless of where, when, or what you fish for. If you've never picked up a rod before, or you've been fishing for a lifetime, our program will teach you all you need to catch more and bigger fish every time you hit the water. You'll learn how to use fish biology and environmental cues to figure out the hows and whys of their behavior in order to plan your fishing trips, make smart, informed decisions on the water, and ultimately put more and bigger fish in the boat. The new wave of fishing is here. Are you ready to catch it? <laughs>